Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and if there's anything that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it, even if we take time, we'll still find time to look into it and get the work done a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing you guys are just the absolute best and we appreciate you so much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggested i react to when the mountain of gold will emerge so Without wasting time, let's get into the video. Some of the scholars swear by Allah that all the minor signs have happened, every single one of them, and that the only thing left now is the coming of the Mahdi and the major signs to follow. Some other scholars don't go that far, but they do say if they haven't already finished, then a few of them are still left. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best about this. They could have all finished. But what comes to my mind is the Furat River. There is a river called the Euphrates River in Jordan. Al Rasul Sallallahu tells us, you'll find these hadiths in Sahih Muslim by the way, that the Euphrates River will be channeled into a different direction. So where there was water will come dry. There won't be water flowing through there. And as a result, a mountain of gold will be revealed. Al Rasul Sallallahu mentioned gold literally, Zahab, Jabal min Zahab. So lots of gold will be revealed. People of the world will fight each other over this. They'll go into battles over this, this gold. He said, don't come near the gold to his ummah, to us. Don't go near it. From every 100, one will live in this battle. And each person will say, because everyone will see this catastrophe. Every person will say, I'm going to be the one to live. I'm going to be the one to live and take my portion. Whether this sign is going to happen before the major signs start or whether they are going to happen within the time of the major signs is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's going to happen with the Euphrates River, the sign of the ending of the world. But before that happens, before the major signs occur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to lift this ummah from its absolute misery and feeble state that it is now. It's going to lift it back up to its victorious, honorable state, back to its nobleness that it once carried, this ummah. It will become the leading nation of the world in every sense of the word as it once was before and even better this is based on one of the hadith several hadiths one of the hadiths is the following which is also in muslim and bukhari al rasul sallallahu said bada al islam gharibam wa sayaud gharibam kama bada fatuba lil ghuraba islam it began very strange to the people strange i don't know of this much of this new ways before was gharib and it will come back in the future strange again kama bada the way it started in the beginning just exactly the same way then he said fatuba lil ghuraba good news to those who are strangers in all this time strange what's strange strange is different to weird strange doesn't mean that it's wrong it just means that it's unknown to the people's customs and traditions and knowledge that they've always had it's strange but interesting i wonder if i was wrong all this time and this strange religion is the right one it's just strange meaning unknown for islam began like that we know the story in the seerah of the prophet all you have to do is to read it and you'll know what i mean and today now in the millennium we have the same situation al-islam is gharib the same way it began there's one extra thing that's worse about our time that it's not only strange to the non-believers it's become strange to different muslims and the muslims have divided and they are strangers to one another I'll give you just a very simple story, a quick one, inshallah, just to get it closer to your mind. In Lebanon, when I first went, I was about 14 years old, up in the village areas, they live in the mountains, that's where my parents are from. The village areas had this strange and weird belief that people who used to be practicing good Muslims, they called them walis, awliyas, the saints. And they believe that they are buried in certain places in the different villages. They say that they're noble men, they're, they're, they're men of extraordinary characteristics that are different to the normal human being. They have some karamat that Allah has blessed them with certain miracles that they can do that no one else can do. And this stayed in their mind. And so in our village, my father's village, we had a huge grave. And in that, they called this 
person in the grave, a Nabi Marmar. Marmar Prophet. He was a prophet, right? He was meant to be a prophet and they called him Marmar, which is a Christian name. They called him Marmar. Allahu Alam, if there's anything really buried in there, I don't know. But it's a huge grave, probably about maybe four meters long. And people take their children there to be cured. They go there and pray around the grave thinking that their prayer will be accepted more or they make supplications at the grave. Now the weird other belief was that there were trees around it. And you're not allowed to cut any branch off because if you cut the branches off, right, this person in the grave is going to come and choke you at night. I've never heard of this before in my life. I get up there and I've got this weird belief. Where did they get it from? Allahu Adam. And when we started to teach them that this is absurd and that this is not what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, and we brought them all the logic. For example, I used to say to them, 14 years old, I used to, it's quite logical. I said to them, look, if he's a really a good man, then he'd want us to use these branches because we're cold and we need to bathe and we need to use it to cook and clean. What does he want with all these trees? And he's probably in Jannah now. What does he want with all this garden over here? They go, no, 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 it's sanctioned to him. You can't touch it. But if he's a good man, why would he want to choke you? <laughs> if he was living, he wouldn't do that. And so on and so forth. When you go and pray at his grave, he needs you more than what you need him. He's dead. He needs your dua. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. They looked at us as being the weird ones. We were the strangers. I remember once a grandmother wanted some uh, water to, to bathe in. It was a Jumu'ah and I wanted some water. And we didn't have any wood. Up there there's no gas. So we had to light up some wood. And what I did was, no one would listen to me. So I gathered up about maybe six, seven year olds. Said, come up with me to the top. We're going to get some branches, man. No branches anyway. So we went up to where the grave was. I gave each child a branch to hold. And we came down this hill. Everybody could see us. The whole village could see us coming down with these branches. And I said, scream out, Allahu Dar, Allahu Nafi. Allah harms and Allah, Allah is the one that prevents harm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that benefits. The whole village stopped. We couldn't even hear a, a rooster crow anymore. Nothing. Everybody raced up to me. Slapped their children and they cursed me. And SubhanAllah. We were the weird ones. What is this new religion you're bringing us? They said, we're bringing a new religion to them now. We've never heard of it all our lives. Our ancestors have always practiced this. And now this is strange. Just to make you laugh a bit, a group of youngsters come up to me, well, youngsters like 18, 19. They said to me, tonight is going to choke you. Look, I'm a good man. Why do you want to choke me? Anyway, that night I was prepared and I recited some Quran and I knew that what's actually making him think that is the shaitan and the shaitan can come and impersonate figures in your dreams. You can get something like a nightmare, which is similar to choking at night. It's called uh, something dream of terror or something. I don't know. Muhim, I saw a little snake in that dream and I grabbed it and chopped its neck off. And I said, is this your power shaitan? Woke up for Fajr afterwards. The youngsters came past the next morning and said, you copped it, didn't you? I said, what are you talking about, man? They go, oh, one day you're going to cop it. Alhamdulillah, now the village has changed. But I'm just illustrating to you that over there, the religion is strange to them. And this day and age, listen, living now in the Western world, you can't get any stranger than this look. The beard. Can't get any stranger now than the veil of the woman. The niqab is now finished, gone. That's like really extreme to them. The beard is now second. And the practices that we do, praying, strange. Holding on to your five daily prayers is strange even to some Muslims. And weird. What's this new religion, they say? And what was already dealt with a long time ago, because values change today, now everybody is re exploring Islam 14 centuries ago and saying, ah, look at that. Look how bad this religion is. You can't do that. Change the values and you say, look how wrong this religion is. You just made up something and now you want to make the religion look like it's wrong and strange and weird. So the religion has started again strange as it was before. And the Rasul Sallallahu told us, you will have four transitions from a proper khilafa on the Quran and Sunnah, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Then it will become a distorted one, Muslims fighting each other. Then it will become a Mulkan Jabriyan, which is a dictatoriate kind of uh, leadership of Khilafah. And then, which is now, there's lots of dictatorships in, in a lot of the Muslim countries, a lot of the Muslim world. And if a person just speaks of Islam in some places, he's imprisoned immediately, called a terrorist and called an extremist and so on and so forth. Then he said, Khilafah will return back, leadership of the Muslims, to the way the Prophet ﷺ began it. And that is yet to happen. That is yet to happen. The last Khilafah we had was the Ottoman Empire. So this is another sign that is inevitably coming. But the thing is, the Muslims will return. The nation of, of Islam and its proper teaching, its proper form, as it began, will come back and will fill the world with peace and justice, just as it was filled with injustice and tyranny. And that's the time of Al-Mahdi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows when this is going to happen. He's talking about this river where it's, uh, this river's waters are going to be separated and there'll be God revealed to the people and they'll come there to fight for the gold and such things. I mean, those are just still material things. 
no matter the situation we're in, no matter what, we seem to always forget, but where money is concerned, we're there. But that's not even the case, it's just showing that we're so indulged in these um, materialistic things, or rather worldly things. That's why people will scramble to get a piece of that gold. Uh, getting to the part where he talks about um, where people refer to something that you believe in as strange, it's because they lack um, knowledge about it. Everything someone doesn't know, they find it strange. Oh, you eat with this, that's strange. Oh, you pray like this, that's strange. Oh, you dress like this, that's strange. Because they lack knowledge concerning why those practices are going the way they're going and which is not a bad thing because that's your chance to educate someone out there and say you know what yes it's strange but strange is good strange doesn't have to be bad strange in the sense that now this is your opportunity to teach or educate that person and it's up to them to take the knowledge that um you communicate or leave it otherwise this was very very amazing if you and other stuff I was talking about as well but if you guys want to contribute concerning other factors of this video feel free to comment your comments are always welcome always be kind and yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video